math says you're dealt pocket aces every 221 hands. But the heart says, oh my god, I have aces. Play it cool, play it cool. Just think about baseball. Of course, the big question with the pinnacle hand in poker is how to get value with it. And Andre Niffler intends to do so by just calling preflop. Does his play make sense? Let's break it down. Going into the hand, Andre had just under 22 blinds and was positioned in the small blind. In that situation, almost every professional is shoving his entire range against an open raise from late position. Generally, flat calling out of the small blind on a short stack is an awful idea with any hand. But there are certain situations, like this one, where the flat call preflop makes perfect sense. This is because Andre believes that Van Dersen isn't an experienced enough player to realize that no good player would flat call medium strength hands from his position. Andre doesn't want to risk losing Van Dersen by shoving or re-raising pre-flop, so instead he elects to call. I actually like Andre's pre-flop decision here, but there is one catch. Sitting behind him is the very experienced Chris Lee, and he knows precisely what a flat call from the small blind on a short stack means from a good player. The only two hands a player of Andre's quality would just call with there are aces or kings. Everything else gets shoved pre-flop. As a result, Chris Lee already knows what Andre has when he just calls, leading him to pass on re-raising his pocket tens in a situation that many players think is a clear three bet. When they get to the flop, Andre decides the board is coordinated enough that he should just lead out. A play he's hoping will result in getting all in against one of his opponent's weaker holdings. Chris Lee calls behind with his set, and Chris Van Dersen makes an optimistic call with second pair behind both of them. The nine on the turn is not the card Andre was hoping to see. He knows it's bad because it completes the straight draw for King Jack and makes two pair for hands like Queen Nine and Ten Nine. But he also knows that checking causes him to lose all control in the hand. He decides to bet small and evaluate. And when Chris Lee raises behind him, Andre becomes certain he's screwed. It's the weirdest stand here. Not only does Andre likely believe Chris has a better hand, but he also likely believes that Chris knows his holding because his pre-flop play is so transparent to a good player. The raise from Chris Lee causes both opponents to fold. I'm gonna show this one, kind of. And gets a show from Andre confirming what Chris knew all along. And Chris remarked, I thought you had that. I thought you had that. Too good. It took serious discipline to get away from this hand, and I respect the fold. But I think the show was a counterproductive flash of ego that potentially exposes his trapping strategy to unaware players. It's okay, though. He's only going to have to wait 220 more hands to try again, which is about eight hours at a final table.